ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of fear going on around the Ukraine. The Russian military have built up a force around the entire country. And they're saying they never seen anything like this. And they're fearing escalation. And what they're doing now is carrying out military drills. And of course, the Ukraine can see this going on. And they are saying it's almost like they are preparing for an invasion. So I'm going to go ahead and play this audio from the Wall Street Journal for you. Ukraine border stir invasion fears. Western officials believe Moscow has sent up to 30,000 troops to Belarus in what they fear could be a key element of any invasion. By Evan Gershkovich. February 10, 2022, 2 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Russia kicked off large scale military exercises in Belarus on its western borders with Poland and Lithuania, and along its southern flank near Ukraine, an escalation of the standoff between Moscow and Western powers and a possible precursor to a Russian invasion of a smaller neighbor. Western officials believe the Russian exercises in Belarus could open a possible new vector to launch an attack on Ukraine, adding to the 100,000 troops Moscow has already deployed to the Russian Ukrainian border. The Kremlin says the military activity is in response to a threat from the West to its own security. Russia and Belarus, which conduct joint military drills routinely, have said the exercises, called United Resolve, are meant to test the readiness of their forces in neutralizing military threats and securing borders. Video released by Russia's defense ministry after the drills started on Thursday showed Russian tanks rumbling across snowy fields, soldiers firing artillery, jet fighters taking off in formation and missile systems deployed for use. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Thursday denounced the exercises as psychological pressure, while French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian described them as a violent gesture. In Moscow, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that Western concerns over the drills were incomprehensible. Moscow has said the troops will leave Belarus once the exercises conclude on February 20th. Ukraine launched its own military exercises in response on Thursday involving drones and anti-tank weapons sent by North Atlantic Treaty Organization members Turkey and the UK. Those drills will also conclude on February 20th. Also Thursday, the U.S. Navy said that it had deployed four more destroyers to Europe for maritime exercises with NATO allies. The Navy didn't say how long the ships would operate in the region. The destroyers joined four other destroyers already assigned there. Russia and Ukraine haven't disclosed the number of troops involved in drills, which started Thursday. Russia's defense ministry has said they don't exceed limits set by a 2011 agreement with Europe according to which exercises involving more than 9,000 troops require notification. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced the drills in late December during a joint summit with his Belarusian counterpart, Alexander Lukashenko. But the U.S. and NATO expect the drills to involve 30,000 troops, making them the largest military exercises since the Cold War. They warned that the exercises could be part of a possible Russian invasion of Ukraine, Military analysts say the timing of the exercises and the total number of troops and kind of weapons systems deployed confirm that view. They said that, according to satellite imagery and open source data, Moscow has deployed its part of the drill's Su-25 and Su-35 jet fighters, electronic jamming systems, nuclear-capable Iskander missile systems, and S-400 surface-to-air missile systems to Belarus, which shares a 700-mile border with Ukraine. This is clearly more than a readiness exercise, said Rob Lee, an expert on the Russian military and fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, a U.S. think tank. At minimum, it is coercive, or it is part of preparations for an invasion. Military analysts also point to the late announcement of the drills and their timing in February, compared with August or September for previous exercises there, as being out of the ordinary. Furthermore, the troops have been transported across thousands of miles from Russia's Far East, while the soldiers in Western Russia typically deployed for drills in Belarus have remained in place.
Analysts said that Moscow might be keeping them ready for an incursion into eastern Ukraine, already the site of a protracted Moscow-backed rebellion. The extensive military buildup just 140 miles from Kiev has prompted fears that Russia could launch a multi-directional attack. Moscow, which has said it isn't planning an invasion, has massed troops in southern Russia around Ukraine and on the Crimean Peninsula, which it annexed in 2014, effectively surrounding the country. The Kremlin has also deployed warships to the Black Sea for naval exercises later this month. Even if Russia doesn't enter Ukraine through Belarus in an invasion, the deployments would stretch Kiev's forces by having to defend against a threat to the north, military experts said. They also allow Moscow to defend its exposed western exclave of Kaliningrad, which is sandwiched between the EU and NATO members Poland and Lithuania, and provide an effective deterrent against NATO. The electronic jamming systems, Mr. Lee pointed out, could be used to stop NATO members from helping Kiev with intelligence gathering. Ultimately, said Russian military analyst Pavel Felgenhauer, Moscow's priority is to create diversions, muddy the waters, create a false narrative so that its main offensive, if it comes, would be more of a surprise. U.S. officials on Sunday estimated that Moscow had in place 70% of the forces it needs to launch a full-scale invasion. The Belarus deployments could be one of the last pieces in the puzzle. Political intentions can change very swiftly but capabilities can't. And the capabilities for a big regional war are now in place, Mr. Felgenhauer said. Russia's deployments to Belarus have been invited by the country's longtime leader, Mr. Lukashenko, who last month said they were needed to respond to the presence of NATO troops in Poland and the Baltic states and Ukrainian forces at his border. The Ukrainian troops were deployed there in response to last fall's migrant crisis at the Belarus-Poland border that Western officials accused Mr. Lukashenko of engineering. Mr. Lukashenko, who has ruled Belarus since 1994, has become increasingly reliant on Moscow's patronage after the U.S. and the EU imposed punishing sanctions on his government and state companies for brutally putting down protests in August 2020, diverting a Ryanair flight carrying a dissident journalist and forcing it to land in Minsk last May and orchestrating the migrant crisis. Artyom Schreibman, a Belarusian political analyst, said that Mr. Lukashenko in recent months had increasingly staked out a position as a key military ally as a way to prove his value to the Kremlin leadership and ensure Moscow continues to back him. Mr. Lukashenko's only way forward is to depend on Russia, Mr. Schreibman said. His political survival rests on Putin always finding it necessary to support him because he is a dependable ally in hard times. The Kremlin has welcomed Mr. Lukashenko's strategy. This allows Moscow to have an extremely loyal military outpost aimed in an important direction, said Fyodor Lukinov, chairman of a Kremlin advisory board on foreign and defense policy. Given the political phase that we find ourselves in right now with the West and Ukraine, it's a very valuable asset to have in the current moment and coming period. In recent months, Mr. Lukashenko has endorsed Russia's annexation of Crimea, ended Belarus's neutral stance on the Ukraine conflict, and offered to allow Moscow to deploy nuclear weapons in his country. Russia in turn has extended Minsk some $2 billion in loans. In an interview with a pro-Kremlin television host on Sunday, Mr. Lukashenko said Belarus would launch joint military operations with Russia against Kiev if it attacked Moscow-backed separatists in eastern Ukraine. Do you think we are joking at the southern border? Mr. Lukashenko said, referring to the joint Russian-Belarusian exercises. A tighter alliance between Moscow and Minsk heralds an extended confrontation with NATO, said Nigel Gould Davis, a senior fellow for Russia and Eurasia at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, a UK think tank. In the standoff over Ukraine, Mr. Putin has demanded that NATO not accept any more Eastern European countries and stop deploying troops and weapons near Russia's borders. With Mr. Lukashenko firmly on the Russian president's side, Mr. Gould Davis, a former UK ambassador to Belarus, worries that the threat from Belarus might not just be directed at Ukraine in the coming months. In all of what's going on, with complex moving parts and a great deal of uncertainty, we should assume that Russia will do things that we are not necessarily looking at or are focusing on, he said. They will plan to surprise us. Corrections and Amplifications An earlier version of this article incorrectly spelled Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's name as Volodymyr Zelensky. Corrected on February. All right, y'all. So 
you have to let me know what you think, but it looks like they're preparing for an invasion to me, but leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.